Yeah, get it all. Get it all raw. Okay, so I just want to just let uh, my audience know that we are now in the presence of the esteemed guitarist from one of my all-time favorite bands, General oh. Giant. Welcome, Gary Green. Thank you, Derek. Nice to be here. How are I'm you today? We got this sorted out. It's a bit well. I had to in I had different kind of Zoom setup. I don't know why I had to install something. Okay. I've got this computer that just goes weird sometimes but uh i tried it again mm -hmm. and now it's okay but here we are two computers here ready to go so here we are <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to visit um i just want to share with you gary that i'm a long time musician but music collector and music freak i've and... read up about your record collection oh you know i've got a big section right over here of gentle giant Huge. i've got some <laughs> questions for you and but John um, come try and sit on your lap. Yes, yes, it's all you know. <laughs> that sounds uh, great, right? Yeah, my parents, my parents. Um, is, do you come from a musical family? Um, not players, but uh, fans, for sure. I mean, my dad was a sort of aspiring musician. He played trombone a little bit, uh, right. or fancied he could play trombone, but he loved jazz and... Uh, in fact, he took me to my first concert, which was Louis Armstrong. Back awesome. in the day, Shepherd's Bush in London. Uh, and uh, it was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, there was always jazz playing in our house. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, my brother is a guitar player. Mm -hmm. My since past brother was a, a big music fan, huge mm -hmm. fan, jazz fan. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's gone now, but he was a drummer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's always been around the family, for sure. You've been surrounded by it, and it sort of explains, you know, um, to me how you're playing. You um, There's a lot of depth to your guitar, and I, I you're, you're, you're playing, Gary, seriously. I want you to know that Thank you. you um, when I hear you're playing, I immediately know that it's you. Have you heard that's that That's the before? best compliment you could pay me, I think, because that's what I always say about players, too, recognizing them. It's like you find your voice, and uh, that's what comes through. Absolutely. And players are instantly recognized. We only need a couple of notes to go, yeah, that's BB. Yeah, that's Miles. You know. Yes. So, so Gary, I understand that today is the 50th anniversary. I just found out this morning. It's incredible. Today. Congratulations. This was yeah. about the time... This is about the time that I finally got to hear the band. This is the American version. Right. I wanted to share a quick story. Um, when I was in my um, sophomore year of high school, I was at the record store and I could only buy one record. I'm trying to figure out. And the, yeah, uh, the, clerk, the clerk sees me and I'm looking at Three Friends and I'm looking at Uriah Heap by Salisbury. And the clerk says, you don't want that General Giant. Get that Uriah Heap. I didn't know, so I bought the Uriah Heap. I loved it. But less than a year later, I finally picked up on the three friends and said, that's what I was looking for all along. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uriah Heap were the same management as us. We used to bump right? into them in, in the office all the time. Yeah, we played a few very early gigs with them. Wow. Yeah. Was that Jerry Braun? Jerry Braun? That's right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mick Box, he was he was a good guy. I bumped I'm, into him years later. He lived around the corner from my brother of all things. And I'd just been to the store across the street mm -hmm. and this car pulls up on the curb and this guy gets out and it's Mick Box. <laughs> <laughs> How like, cool is that? 30 years after the fact. I just like, yeah, I remember you. So very cool. So yeah. very cool. So when did you move to the States? Uh when I got married. Well, no. Tell a lie. Four years after I got married, I married Judy, my wife. She's from this little town we live in, mm -hmm. Seventh Out in Illinois. So we're practically neighbors. Right, of. right. Um, and so we lived in England from 76 to about 1980. And then mm -hmm. we sold the house and moved over here at the breakup of, after the breakup of Giant. Because mm -hmm. Ray and I were going to, we tried to continue as a duo. Mm -hmm. We even got a record deal. And, uh, but they just sort of fizzled apart. You know, Ray decided he was going to stay in London, and I had already sort of got all my furniture halfway down the St. Lawrence Seaway. Wow, wow. You know, on containers and stuff. And uh, 
and you know, and in those days there was no internet. There was, you know, phone calls were a, a million dollars, you know, a minute kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it just it couldn't wasn't sustainable. But there you I, go. That's that's how it goes. Very cool. You know, um, I don't know if this name will uh, ring a bell, but a few years ago I was working in Chicago recording an album. Um, uh, hired as a, a session musician, and, and the drummer on the session was Brad Elvis. He's with yeah. the Romantics. He mentioned that he had come across your your path or you guys somehow knew each other. I was blown away. Well, we played in a band together. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So Brad is a, is a friend of mine. This is awesome. Wow, that's great. Yeah, me too. Uh, big hello, which he, yeah. he's kind of had that going for years in various yeah. states. And at one state, um, it was Brad me and a bass player from our local area here called Rick Sones. Okay. And we played, played a bunch of gigs, uh, spent about a year together playing stuff. It was great. Brad's awesome. A great fun. He's a great drummer and he's, oh yeah. yeah. He knows everything about all the bands, you know, and he's like focused in on minutia, you know, but he really is. Yeah. He blew me guy. away. His record collection <laughs> at his house blew me away. It's, it's in a, it's behind a hidden house, a hidden wall in his house. I don't know if you knew that. He's moved since I knew, knew him, but okay. yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, the, the internet was built for a guy like Brad. You know, no he doubt. used to write out all the things in tiny script. You know, mm-hmm. he was so diligent about um, putting the band, you know, the list, set list together and yeah. informing everybody and writing updates and stuff. And mm-hmm. I bet he loves the internet now. Oh, this is beautiful. It's such a small world. Yeah, it is. Smaller every day. Gary, are you still playing? I am. Not in a sense that you would say, you know, I'm playing at wherever tonight. Mm-hmm. No, I'm playing here in my living room, show mm-hmm. at eight o'clock tonight, you know, nice. that kind of thing. And I'm sort of doing a little bit of home recording and stuff and uh, fighting arthritis, you know. Yeah, I got it too. <laughs> I've got it too. You, uh, you know, I'm sure. You're a bass player, right? Mainly, but I play guitar and drums and keyboards as well. Yeah. Okay. I do, yeah. So now, Gary, I've noticed over the years looking up, it doesn't look like you've done any solo recordings? No, I haven't. No. Okay. Has Mainly that... because of a lack of uh, writing. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to ask, Gary, is that on most of the Gentle Giants, I don't see a writing credit, but I can't imagine that you weren't involved in at least arranging some of that stuff. Well, yeah, um, it's sort of hard to pinpoint. I mean, obviously, most of the writing, 98, 75% of the, the writing was done by Ryan Derrick, Ryan mm-hmm. Kerry, excuse me, mm-hmm. and some, and Derek too. There was a bunch of stuff that Derek came up with that uh, was then rearranged by Ray mm-hmm. at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, what tunes would they be? Another show? Mm-hmm. Uh, perhaps timing, maybe a little bit of Derek okay. in there, but okay. yeah, Derek uh, contributed an awful lot to the music of the band, not just the lyrics. Mm-hmm. But the main bulk of the writing, obviously, was done by Ray and Kerry. Okay, and uh, you know, I'd kind of Kerry would give me guitar parts, and I would rearrange them or, you know, alter them. Yes. So no, I didn't do any writing per mm-hmm. se in the band. Um, well, who could when you've got Ryan Carey in there? Well, they're amazing. <laughs> they're, they are amazing. But does that indicate that all along your main focus has been as a player, someone who likes to play as opposed to composing? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's not that I don't want to compose. It's mm-hmm. that I don't have, you know, the chops of uh, a Ray or a Carey to do that. Okay. I mean, I have some noodles of my own that I find interesting, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you talk about composing in the sort of classical written sense mm-hmm. of you know uh, that Kerry does, then no, I'm I'm not that guy. Okay, you know, but I mean, yes, I, I've come up with little tunes and stuff. Yeah, no doubt, but no it's doubt. different different type of thing, obviously. Yeah. Now, did that? Did you guys write that stuff out ever? Uh, I don't read music, so that. Wouldn't have been much use to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I, I just I find that so all... amazing. I find that so amazing. Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's all right. I learned it all by ear. Wow. Um, wow. You know, we'd, we'd have sessions where uh, 
if they were particularly difficult parts, mm -hmm. and a lot of them were, let's face yeah. it, they were recorded on cassette, you know. Okay. I mean, we're going back to the dark ages here. I remember that cassette recorders had really only just become available. Yeah. Really, and portable ones, the ones yeah. that ran on batteries that you could take here to there, like kind of like hen's teeth, you know, rare. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. we did have access to those. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what we recorded. My parts were recorded and I'd learn them yeah. with, with the tape, you know. Amazing. Or I, and I'd sit down with Kerry and Ray and, you know, we'd just learn the parts that way. And in in those situations, that's where the parts got altered a little bit to be more guitaristic, okay. that they would be more playable and sound more natural on the guitar mm -hmm. as opposed to it being just a keyboard part that is now played on guitar. Yeah. You know, you've got to make it sound like it was on the guitar. Mm -hmm. So that kind of finessing would happen in those situations. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Gary, to my ears, it sounds like the band respected your voice because there's a lot of these songs where it sounds like the guitar, even though you can hear it's very keyboard oriented, but the guitar is so central to the movement. I'm thinking in particular of some songs on here on yeah. in the Glass House. Well, the title I, track for sure. I mean, it's yes, a guitar driven my, tune, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Was, was that, well, I mean, it needed a strong guitar voice, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I was that guy. I am that guy. I, yes. I still play that way, you know. I, yeah, but, you are. But the, but the, the, the trick of it all, for still, I mean, I've said this in other in interviews too, it's not, not that any of us were sort of uh, wanting to project ourselves into the front or the limelight. We really, truly wanted to be a group, you know, and yeah. play as an ensemble. And yes. that was the strength of the band in the end. You know, you, have, you have great writers, but you have also good players who can make the song sound something i mean you know there are songs and they mm -hmm. don't sound much until somebody with a sort of empathetic ear can play them properly yes yes you know and i think i'm yeah. able to do that with a lot of the giant stuff so absolutely gary i think that. that has also to do with why the music lives on it's not a nostalgic listen so i'd like to share that yeah, i have not. been i've been listening to gentle giant continuously since the 70s for some reason or another because the music is still very vital and there's always so stuff, there's always stuff to to um notice that i didn't notice before when i listened i was just listening to something before you came got doing a little bit of warm-up and i heard i uh, on youtube and there's a three friends album of which on the end there's a live version of prologue okay and it's ridiculously fast but the band is just great cooking along and there's like this part at the end i'd forgotten this ending that we did live different other ending mm -hmm. and there's all these keyboard parts now it's like i have never heard these before and just don't remember them so mm -hmm. i'm still discovering stuff in it even today like like you say you know and that uh, that thrills me it doesn't get old for not me. at all and how does it feel to have it's like in a way a renaissance of of uh, awareness of gentle giant that's been going on these last few years it's i think it's incredible it's wonderful um before the pandemic i had been going to regularly going to like progressive music festivals you know near fest was a big one i don't know if you knew that and yes, out there yes. on the east coast yeah it, it closed a long time ago but since then there have been others and i've, I've gone to several of these and i've mm -hmm. met tons of people who love gentle giant of course yeah. and the influence that it has on bands and whoever uh, it's it's wonderful and it's yeah. it's purely testament to the music that it's absolutely it's not you know it's kind of not of its time it's uh it's timeless and it is timeless you know, and it has an a cliche but it's true well it's so true and there's this quality um i really felt like the music of general giant has not only um entertained me but it's educated me it educates me it it's 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 kind of like higher knowledge music in some ways to me. It kind of it, it stretches it stretches you to understand. I mean, it's not passive listening. Is no, it? I no. mean, which is fine by me. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's, I don't want that. I want mm -hmm. something that's a bit challenging. To, you mm -hmm. have to listen to it. 
Not all the time, but yeah. mostly, you, yeah. you know, I'm listening to music for that, you know, yes, to, to be uh, emotionally involved with it, you know, and uh, cool. intellectually involved with it too. Very so, cool. so, I so Gary, I want, to, I want to share this with you. This is a compliment. When all through the years of the band, listening to you, you always, your guitar playing to me strikes me. I mean, it's, the bluesy part of it is very authentic, okay? And so I kept thinking that you're you're American because you don't sound like a British <laughs> guy. You don't you didn't you don't sound like a British guy who's learned the blues. You sound like an American guy who has lived with the blues. Your your feel is really strong. Well, I've oh, thank you. That's I think that's. A, compliment it's a big <laughs> I mean, it's a huge compliment i mean i mean i am i'm british i grew up on british blues you know pretty okay. much mm -hmm. clapton mm -hmm. and beck and all those guys you know yeah uh, which i loved and i i feel myself to be a sort of british blueser but i also love very much bb buddy guy yeah those guys Right. That, that really speaks. I mean, they're like truly authentic. I mean, yeah. Eric yeah. in his early days was good, but you could feel he was, he was sort of borrowing it. That's what I want to get across to you, Gary. Uh, yeah. In the days of Cream, because I'm 67 going on 68, Cream were massive to me, and Eric Clapton yeah. was. But you have an even more authentic feel than Clapton to me. I'm telling you, brother. Okay. Well, thank you. And Peter Green actually was my favorite of the British bluesers. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And rest and rest in peace, Christine McVie. We just yeah, lost him. Yeah, just yesterday. Right. But so my dad's so sad. My dad played with T Bone Walker. I don't know if you know. Oh, who. really? Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I was around that in the house. So I've heard yeah. the I've heard the shit. Yes. Bless, bless you. Well, the other thing is that I don't remember this, but Louis Armstrong was a guest at my grandparents' house across the street. But but I don't remember my brother told me about it. I said, oh, oh, that's who that was. You know, I was just a kid, you know. But I just wanted to share, you, you, you really, like your, your solo on His Last Voyage on this album. That is a standout. Did you compose that or did you just feel it? I think it's a fantastic guitar solo. I just played it off the cuff. What? That's just, how it goes. That's how you do. Yeah. I mean, I I don't remember if it was the first take or second take, but it would have only been one or the other. Wow. But that's how I would do. I always played solos like that in a studio. Mm -hmm. I didn't ever have anything prepared. Man. Um, well, tell a lie. I guess I had a little bit of preparation and, or a little bit of an idea in the uh, solo for um, Peel the Paint. Okay. Playing with Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only in that, you know, it starts loud, it goes quiet. I mm -hmm. introduce the echoplex mm -hmm. and I play some sort of rhythmic thing. We do some sort of rhythmic thing with it. And then we get out and come loud and then we finish and go back to the tune. But that's as much planning as there was in it. Other than yeah. that, I didn't have any, no, it was not written out. It's just off the cuff. And if it didn't work, well, then you, you do another take, you know. No doubt. And if no that doubt. didn't work, you do another take. But beyond sort of like four or five goes at it, it's like you just, I was, I would get stale. Yeah. And, yeah. and just not have any sort of sparks of it, you know, and that was Understood. kind of the approach we had to recording anyway, was to yeah. try and keep them fresh and not yeah. overplay them, you know? Yeah. Like, like John Weathers drumming, it's very sparksy, lots of energy. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, John approached uh, playing the same way. I mean, mm -hmm. John and I were roommates. We were buddies all through Giant. You know, we were we were the bad boys and the party room and all that. You know. <laughs> so, Gary, I'm kind of curious that um, I can only find a couple of uh, instances of you doing other work with other bands, like on this album with with uh, Eddie Jobson. Zinc. Yeah. And I was just curious. Um, if you um, were too busy, did people ask you to do sessions besides General Giant? I would think that, you know, people would want that playing. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't get. Uh, well, I don't think I got asked if I did. I probably turned it down. I was always still am like kind of shy and not very confident about my own ability. You know, I'm not. Um, 
I guess that's true of a lot of people, but yeah. especially back then I was younger and mm -hmm. I wasn't a pushy kind of guy, uh, not one to sort of mm, push things to make mm -hmm. things happen, you know? Yeah. That's why Derek and Ray were the leaders of the band, obviously, because yeah. that's yeah. more their personality. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I didn't take advantage to my regret of mm -hmm. the sort of um, space that we had in the British music scene. I mean, okay. I could have, looking back, sort of phoned up anybody and said, hey, I'm Gary Green from General Giant. Would you like to get together and play and da da da? Yeah. And I didn't do any of that. And it's, yeah. I, you know, I just clubbed my head over every day of not for not doing things like that. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. a, um, just the other day, I just was reading an article about John Mayer, who I loved. Mm -hmm. he's, he's now not touring because he's 89. Right, <laughs> right, right. But he opened up for us somewhere in California. John Mayer, and we were coming off, I think, sound check or something. Mm -hmm. And John, this sort of suntanned, you know, healthy guy, so I sprung up the stairs and said, Hi, I'm John Mayer. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah. John, yeah. You know, and, uh, but my shyness didn't allow me to talk to him to say, Thank you for all the music that you've given me, you know? I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it yesterday, thinking, What? idiot i was to <laughs> not do that you know and Still, you God, were there though you were there yeah and he yeah. was there but it didn't <laughs> seem right that he was opening for us you know that's one well, of and the what you're that happens with rock music it does and what an honor though to have him you know open for you what an honor you know yeah Absolutely. although we often didn't usually didn't know who was opening until we got to wherever we were going you know yeah. unless it was a, like a pre-planned tour and da -da -da, yeah but there were all, there were often weird things like that. Um, John Lee Hooker opened mm -hmm. up for us once. Wow, wow! And he's sitting there, and I'm standing there in my platform boots and puffy shirt, thinking, "It's John Lee Hooker. I should go over and talk to him and play mm -hmm. some." And I'm, I feel like you know, I'm the Jerry Seinfeld character wearing the puffy shirt, thinking, "What an idiot I look like! I can't go over and talk to him." You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so I funny. didn't, you know. Yeah. Again, idiot. That's quite quite all right though. So then, tell me how did how did this session come about? How did you playing on this come about? Derek, um, I had moved to the states, and uh, I don't know when that was. Is that like eighty three, eighty four, something? Yeah, like that? yeah, it's early eighties. Yeah. Yeah, and um, Derek called me one day and said he'd been talking to Eddie Johnson, and mm -hmm. he was looking to make an album and wanted to see if I could would play on it. And I said, yeah, you know, so um, I called up Eddie Jobson and mm -hmm. we had a great conversation over the phone and I've since got to know him a little bit and mm -hmm. he's a mm -hmm. great guy. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I went out to Connecticut where he lived and uh, stayed with him for three or four days and learned parts from him, you know, mm -hmm. as, mm -hmm. as I did. And mm -hmm. uh, we played on, I played on his album. Very and nice. Not that you can tell too much on that, actually. It's quite buried in there. It's but... quite buried, but what's interesting is one of the other guitar parts on the record that I really like by Nick Murdoch, he sounds like he's trying to play like you. I didn't I've noticed that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'm check telling it you, out again. I'm telling you, it sounds like <laughs> I'm saying, because when I looked at it to refresh my memory, I, you know, okay. And then the, the track that you're on, it's like, yeah, you're barely there. But I'm hearing this other track, and I'm thinking, well, that sounds like that's Gary. The guy's trying to play like you. It's pretty cool. Well, pretty he's cool. a good guy. Oh, he's a good guy, Eddie. I haven't seen him in a long time, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good chap. Gary, it sounds to me like your experience with the band and the music industry has been more positive than negative. Um, that's only because I don't give it a lot of deep thought, I think. Okay, okay, <laughs> if, well, if I thought about it in critical terms more, I think I'd be very, I would come out quite angry. And okay. I, that doesn't do a soul much good, I okay. don't think. So, I mean, you know what the music industry is like, it's a bunch of cutthroats, mm -hmm. as in most businesses. So yeah. you can get drawn into that and mm -hmm. get pulled along with that yeah. kind of thing, or you can not well um, you saved yourself you know using a little bit of wisdom that's that's awesome that's really wonderful well, whatever it is i don't know but 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, I loved playing. It was, mm-hmm. That's what it comes down to. It's supposed to be all about the playing. It's supposed to mm-hmm. be all about the music. Mm-hmm. Anything else that gets in the way of that, and greed is all over the place, and it's yeah. just, it's an evil thing that sort of sucks the joy and the momentum and the creativity mm-hmm. out of the whole thing, which yeah. is so con- contrary to what it intentionally is supposed to be about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, great. you know, there's there's millions of stories you've read of all. You know yeah. how jazzers were like screwed over, and I have my own story. I have my own stories. <laughs> we'll talk about those another time. Just you and me, yeah, for sure. So, Gary, um, what is life like for you these days? You're not steady gigging, and you just kind of um, how's well, life for you? I'm retired. You know, I'm 72. Just the mm-hmm. other day, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a heart attack seven years ago, but oh, wow. I seem to be doing well. Good, and, and happy birthday belatedly. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I, I exercise and I, I eat good. I don't smoke anymore and I don't drink to excess really mm-hmm. anymore. Um, there you go. But um, I, I keep busy. I like mm-hmm. I like doing the house repairs, you know, woodworking oh. and stuff like that. I've got okay. a big yard and mm-hmm. all that good stuff. But... Um, I do play with some friends, mm-hmm. so I, I do keep my hand here. I love it. Yeah. I you never was same, mu- Sorry? You have your same uh, guitars? Same guitars? Um, I don't. Not really. Uh, the, the, the main guitar I had back then in Giant was a, was a actual, you know, 1960 Les Paul standard. Yes. It was, uh, you know, had I had it today, it would be worth... Uh, well, it is worth a fortune. Someone's got it, and it's worth a fortune. Mm-hmm. Um, Judy, my wife, and I, we got, we got divorced in uh, 93, 1993. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> the divorce didn't really work out, so we, we got married again. <laughs> well, that's year, wild. <laughs> a year later. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sold that guitar to sort of finance our getting back together. You know? Wow. wow. Okay. So... Uh, I uh, no regrets about it, but mm-hmm. somebody's good. got a very nice guitar somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I've, what I found out over the years is that uh, <clears throat> instruments kind of come and go, mm-hmm. and uh, they're not the holy grail of why you're a good player or not. You know, the magic is in your hands. It is. In your it brain is. and in your heart, and mm-hmm. that's where it stays. So you can pick up any old piece of crap with strings on it, really, and make pretty good noise right. out of it. Right. I found so... Most of my guitars are about under five hundred dollars. Really. Okay. Got... Okay. Well, like, but like you say, the uh, the magic is in the fingers. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. It... It's a Yamaha. It's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was four hundred and seventy six bucks off eBay. I think. Very cool. Has a good feel on the neck and everything, eh? Yeah. Awesome. You know, I can make the noises I need to make on it. There you go. So you said that you and Ray started a project. Are there any recordings and would they ever possibly see the light of day? There is one. Well, on the, uh, what's it on? You know, we have those compilation albums that scrape in the barrel and uh, what's the other one? Under construction. Okay. And I don't have those. I don't have those. I should try to find them. Okay. Well, scrape in the barrel is a huge resource. It's like, I don't know. 100 hours of music on it or something mm-hmm. but they have a bunch of Kerry's original demos ray's original demos some of mine unrecorded stuff uh bits and pieces all kinds of in, uh interesting stuff for the mm-hmm. for somebody who really likes gentle giant yeah. you know, it's not your average listeners it's not something you put in on <laughs> at a party yeah yeah <laughs> there's gotcha. samples on it for god's sake you know there's like yeah. the, the snare drum from river is on it which is like <laughs> john's favorite snare drum sound ever you know so mm-hmm. that's on there okay um, i'm so getting the question? time prompt i'm getting the time prompt just to let you know we'll be wrapping up shortly but go ahead okay uh i forget where i was what the what the um what were we talking uh, about? scraping the barrel the ray the ray tracks you all right ray. so there's a couple of those we called ourselves shout Okay. And there's two. We did actually released a single. Oh wow! Called Starting Line, and it's uh, to be found somewhere. I, mm, I don't. There's none of them about anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't think. But uh, 
there's a picture of the cover and stuff, and it's on either scraping the barrel or on the, under construction, and the okay. B side is on that too. Starting line, I think that was. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. I'll look that stuff up. But it was kind of uh, in the in the kind of new wavey, you know, like punk had hit in Britain and uh, sort of killed off prog, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. But there was sort of like a new wave sort of bands coming out, and it was a little bit more in in that vein. Okay, let's okay. say it wasn't it wasn't prog music, wasn't giant by any yeah. means. In us, guitar driven stuff, and mm -hmm. it's okay. Cool, cool. Obviously, wasn't great because it didn't last. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it, uh, Gary. Um, because I've had this happen to me before, where they tell me that you've got so much time left, but then they, but they cut you off. I'm gonna try to wrap this up. I just want to tell you, Gary, that seriously, when the Beatles played Ed Sullivan um, here in America, it changed my life, okay? And then the British wave really influenced and inspired me as a kid and in many ways. I want you to understand that, to me, Gentle Giant is in the same pantheon as the Beatles for me. Oh, man. I'm serious. You wow, guys are one of the, you're one of the most much. important. You're one of the most important bands for me. Um, the Beatles, Little Richard, Chuck Berry, King Crimson, Genesis, Gentle Giants, so, hugely important in my life. Music oh, that it's, it's all it's it's really been music that saved my life. <clears throat> Another quick story. I ended up homeless on the streets in Colorado for a while, shortly after graduating from high school, and I had records with me including this and i'm on the road hitchhiking with a box of records and one of the songs that would keep me going inside was the song aspirations off that album it's a great tune i, just I mean it to... does strike you in the it does it hurts, doesn't it yeah. yes thank you so much gary thank you for yeah. this music yeah on well, behalf of all the thank other... you i'm glad it is that's what's nice about it is to you know meet people where the what you've done has affected them not you know uh it's lovely absolutely. that you can share that absolutely and and one more thing this is a little funny some folks might not get it but you know you guys had what we call a ghetto pass have you ever heard that term not really okay what i'm saying is that general giant had the grit black people here in america recognize general giant as the real deal a lot of my black friends, when I would play Gentle Giant, said, mm, that's funky. Yeah, they can do it. So you guys got a ghetto pass. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that, man. That's great. Well, it's not uh, fake. You didn't fake You didn't fake the soul. You didn't fake it. You really felt it. No, that's and that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. For me, uh, yeah. No, I'm, well, of that, I'm really proud. That's great because that's, that's, that's what I meant. When, yeah. when I was playing, that's what yeah. I do when I. That's why I play. You know, it's uh, not why I play. It is what I play. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Well, that's I've, man. Yeah, I've heard a friend Thank of mine. You. Uh, you bet a friend of mine, um, very good musician. Said he don't sound like it, but he could cut Stevie Ray Vaughan. Ooh. Yeah. Now that's now, and that's what I mean about your feel. It's like when you when you do the blues, the blues licks. It's like it's like man, that's got grit. It's got grit. Thanks. That's, yeah. that's great to hear. I mean, that's yeah. uh, that's what I love. You know, I think. Uh, let's see, who's my favorite blueser? Probably got to say uh, Muddy Waters. Yeah. I mean, I got, and I got, got another one. He's got grit and you know, tsk, ouch. Actually, and another <laughs> another quick one. There's all these. I was in a band in the 90s with Muddy Waters' stepson, Bobby. <laughs> we got to so, continue this conversation, Derek. Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll I, give you a call after this. Anytime, you. anytime. I yeah. tell you what, besides the time going up, I got to go to the damn little boy's room. You know, okay, it, says, uh, it says up here 445 left. Okay. Is that what you I mean, got? I'm going to hang on for a minute, then then I'll just, I'll just go when we're done. I'll go when we're okay. done. Yeah, I've got to go too. I mean, us older guys have <laughs> exactly. got bladder issues. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just wearing out. It's, just, it's crazy, man. I tell you what, Gary. Um, I talked to to Derek Sh Shulman first, but I knew 
that I would vibe with you guys as people. It came through the music that you guys aren't a bunch of assholes, or at least ways that's not the bigger part of who you are. Hello. One of our dogs barking in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. I mean, we're just guys, you know, regular mm -hmm. people. Um, mm -hmm. I go out and I mow my lawn and I pick up the dog do in the yard and put it out in the curb, you know. Right on. It's just it's just living, man. Yeah. That's all it is. When's the last time you've been to uh to the UK? Um Wow, three years, three and a okay. half years, probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's it like going back? Uh it's very small over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything's small. Little cars, tiny roads. It's hugely expensive. I, no, it's like literally falling off a bike. I mean, it's home, you know. Mm. I love it. Yeah. I love London. It's where I grew up, North mm -hmm. London. Uh, it's wonderful. I, I still miss it okay. dearly, you know, the, the mm -hmm. countryside and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I tell you what, even though we've got two minutes, man, I can't hold it. I got to go. Okay. I got to go. Derek, Derek, we will talk much. more. We will talk more. You have my number. You're free to call me anytime. And yeah. I may ask you to do this again if it's cool in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Part two, three, four. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks, Gary, so much. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. We'll bye -bye. see you later, man. Bye-bye. Bye, folks.